Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the September gardening to-do list. I've done one of these uh, each of the months of 2020, and I'll be back with one in uh, October, November, and December as well. I hope these lists are helpful. Uh, there is a lot of information and a lot of things that can be done in the garden uh, in each of these months. These lists don't necessarily change completely uh, month to month, uh, but uh, over the course of the year, they have changed uh, quite a bit. Uh, we're now heading into September and October. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina in, in zone 7B, almost eight, and fall is definitely the best time of year for me to be planting. Uh, and I, uh, that would be uh, shrubs and trees and hardy perennials. Uh, this is the uh, just absolute best time of year. Can be a little dry, and I'll talk about that uh, later, but um, uh, I'm definitely gonna plant hardy uh, shrubs, trees, and perennials. I, I don't like to plant things that are marginal. As an example of that, uh, I have a, a palm in a container right here, and it really kind of needs to go in the ground, but it's marginally hardy in my area. So I think I'm actually gonna overwinter it in that container up on my porch, keep it from freezing solid. And then uh, next spring, I'll put it in the ground. And so I'm look, you know, that's my one exception to fall is the best time to plant uh, is that I don't want things that are going to kind of be fighting for their life a little bit from the cold to be planted at that exact same time. Uh, the other exception is I don't like marginally I don't like to plant marginally hardy uh, ornamental grasses. Uh, I find that digging a hole in the fall, uh, the loose soil collects water more easily, and a lot of times my dormant uh, this is experience from years of landscaping and having to guarantee plants. Uh, I would have a hard time. Um, a lot of times my ornamental grasses uh, wouldn't come back from the winter, and I think it was mostly it wasn't it wasn't anything to do with cold. It was to do with the soil being wetter because it had been disturbed. So some other things that can be done uh, planting wise in the fall is uh, definitely bulbs. I have ordered my fall bulbs. Most of the companies you order bulbs from will ship them at the time that it's appropriate to plant them. And uh, so th that, that's kind of a nice thing if the company you're dealing with uh, does that because uh, they'll arrive at the time uh, when, like I say, you should be putting them uh, into, the, into the ground. For me, I've ordered, um, I'm in the, in the southeast here, uh, most of the bulbs I can go ahead and put in the ground when I receive them. Uh, unfortunately for me, I, you know, uh, tulips and uh, hyacinth and a few other things, I actually need to cold treat. Uh, our winters are not always cold enough to uh, get enough cold treatment on those bulbs. So some of those things I'll actually put into the refrigerator. I'll show you that on the channel once I uh, receive my bulbs, but daffodils and others I can go ahead and uh, sink in the ground at that time. I talked about this in last month's video, I believe, but things like daylilies and hostas and those super hardy perennials that can be divided, uh, you can go ahead and do that while you can still see the foliage on them uh, once they uh, retreat under the ground. You can divide them in the winter. You can kind of divide hosta anytime, uh, but it's, it's much easier in the fall while you can still see the leaves. Of course, our flowering annuals and perennials and containers and hanging baskets and all those things are starting to slow down a little bit here in the uh, late summer and uh, early fall. And it's time to kind of switch those things out to uh, fall blooming things. I think that you would find a good supply of uh, fall blooming perennials right now at your uh, garden centers, things like anemones and mums and asters. Uh, those things are great. Um, I really like adding asters uh, um, in, in the landscape and I will here. It's just great to have something flower that late in the summer and early fall when everything else is, is uh, slowing down. So sometime later in September, uh, maybe even early October, um, I will add uh, my fall and winter uh, flowering annuals and some color to containers and into the ground. For me, that's gonna be things like pansies and snapdragons. Uh, Johnny Jump Ups, uh, flowering cabbage and kale, uh, lots of things that we can um, add here, especially in the southeast, to give some color uh, through, the, through the winter months. Uh, if you're buying um, mums in the fall, the ones that you're buying you know, from the grocery stores and from you know, box stores and, and even the garden centers, the ones that are just perfect little round balls, uh, they're not necessarily varieties that were bred for anything other than uh, do, putting on that big show in the fall. There are hardier chrysanthemums if you want some chrysanthemums to put into the ground and probably going to a garden center in your area, you would be able to, you would be able to find some of those uh, that will come back every year and uh, perform uh, every fall for you. So for most of the summer, I've been talking about deadheading uh, annuals and perennials uh, throughout the summer so they keep producing uh, flowers sometime here in the late uh, summer 
if there's some things you want to collect seed on, you need to stop uh, deadheading them. And also leaving some of these seed heads, especially on things like coneflowers and black-eyed Susans, uh, they're great for the uh, birds uh, in the fall and great for you to collect seeds on as well. But goldfinches uh, absolutely go crazy for those uh, coneflowers and black-eyed Susans and, and those kinds of things. If you can leave them in place, I've got some beautiful ones back here with seed heads on them. And I expect uh, any day now to, uh, to see the birds uh, to start start working on those. Uh, this is the uh, time of year here in September that those of you, especially in colder climates, are gonna need to think about digging up your uh, bulbs and corms and, and rhizomes of things that are, uh, that are not as winter hardy. And those things are gonna be like things like dahlias and um, uh, elephant ears and uh, caladiums, uh, those kinds of things if you want to store those uh, for the winter time uh, before you get a uh, a frost or a freeze on them. It's super tempting uh, going into late summer and early fall to uh, cut back some of your perennial things to the ground already because they may not look as, obviously they don't look as good as they did probably in the late spring and in the earlier parts of the summer. Uh, but wait uh, until most of that foliage dies back to the ground because it needs to uh, take that energy from the top of the plant uh, down into the roots to overwinter. So again, before you cut back your perennials, uh, let them die completely back to the ground. Make mental notes of the things that are kind of diseased and not in the best of shape. Uh, you, don't, you, can, you can add, when you cut them back later in the fall, you can add all that material to your compost bin, but I wouldn't add uh, the plants that were diseased or you know, were spotted and those kinds of things. Uh, keep, keep those to the side of your compost pile and dispose of them another way. While I'm talking about uh, diseased uh, material and uh, things that maybe don't look so great uh, this time of year, let's talk about uh, tidying up the garden uh, as fall comes on. If you've got uh, fruit trees and fruit plants, you may want to clean up uh, the fruit that has fallen underneath them. That can be a uh, place where uh, disease can uh, become an issue. If you have things like hydrangeas that have had severe leaf spot and they're dropping leaves, and as they drop leaves throughout the fall, you want to get those out and uh, clean them up. And uh, we kind of want to put a barrier back uh, on the top. I talk about mulching every month and keeping the, uh, the, you know, keeping the uh, soil covered. Uh, in the fall is when we're going to have our henbit and chickweed uh, and our winter weeds uh, germinating and uh, also uh, you know we're going to have uh, uh, our diseased and, and dead and dying leaves and things like that uh, on the ground. I, this is the time of year, one time of year that I like to mulch. I like to mulch uh, in the uh, late spring and then I like to mulch uh, in the early fall. Those are my two main times and I, I would just I, Rather than doing one big four inch layer of mulch one time of year, I'd prefer to do it twice, maybe two, two, two and a half inch layers of mulch because those are the key times when weeds germinate. You get this weed germination uh, in March and April and you get this weed germination in September and October and into November depending on, on where you are. So I like to mulch. So I'll clean up uh, diseased things and uh, edge everything and then put down a layer of mulch and that mulch will also help regulate uh, water in the fall. And let me come back around and talk about watering uh, on newly planted things uh, in the fall. Uh, I'm in the Southeast United States. It's actually our driest time of the year. I'm also, but I'm also in Hurricane Alley and we can have, you know, hopefully not a big hurricane, but uh, I've had 12 inch rains in September. Uh, and then I've had the month of September be almost no rain whatsoever. And so, uh, you definitely have to continue to water uh, into the fall and especially newly planted things. About an inch of water a week is kind of ideal on most of these things. Uh, I tend to plant shrubs and trees, water them extremely well. And then uh, in the fall with the shorter days and the cooler nights, uh, I'll just check them every two or three days and I'll just dig down with my finger, see if they're dry. And if they're dry, I water that space extremely, extremely well. Containers, um, weirdly enough, you know, you go through spring and, you, and into by midsummer, you're watering your containers just constantly trying to keep up with it. Uh, as the days get shorter going into fall, you'll notice very, very quickly uh, your containers will require less water as the things in them uh, slow down their use of water. So be super careful to back off on your uh, fall watering of your containers. You'll find that if you're doing pansies and mums and fall blooming things in your containers or even lettuce that I'll talk about later. They just don't require a lot of water in the fall. So be careful watering containers, but the ground, continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, water, let them dry out, and then you know, drown and forget is my uh, strategy on uh, fall watering. 
while I'm still talking about landscape plants, uh, shrubs, trees, perennials, uh, annuals, and those kinds of things, let me tell you a few things I would not do in September. Uh, I would not fertilize your uh, shrubs and trees and, and perennials. We don't want to push any new growth on them. Uh, if you really want to fertilize uh, later uh, in the fall or early winter, let, the, let everything have gone completely dormant before you do. For me, I just wait until the late winter, early spring. I do one application of an organic fertilizer uh, every year. Uh, this will also uh, be pruning. I don't want to do a lot of any kind of general pruning this late in the summer or early fall. It could also stimulate growth. Uh, it could also be a big issue with uh, spring flowering. If you don't know what the plant is, it may, it may be something that already has its flower buds on it for next spring. And so any pruning you do on it right now, it's not gonna have time to reset uh, those uh, flower buds. And one other thing I'd wait to do uh, is transplanting. I do think that fall and early winter is about the best time of year to be transplanting your trees and shrubs, but I think it's still a little bit early yet. Uh, to be working on those things and so I'd probably wait until you get a, a heavy frost or freeze, let the leaves drop off of it if it's deciduous and let it go completely dormant before you start transplanting. So I don't talk a whole lot about lawn maintenance uh, on this channel. I did a sod installation here, the sod that I'm standing on right here is zoysia. It's a warm season grass. Those of you with cool season grasses uh, like bluegrass and, um, and fescue, uh, it is the time of year you're going to have uh, lots of maintenance going on. Uh, your fall fertilization, you can aerate, you can dethatch, you can overseed. So lots of things uh, that you can do in your area and you might want to check with your local garden center and see you know, the timing on uh, all of those types of applications and those types of uh, um, uh, you know, things like thatching and aerating, uh, you know, what they recommend to do in your area. And some of the garden centers, the garden center I worked at as a kid actually rented uh, aerators and dethatchers. So it's a possibility that yours does in your area as well. My warm season grass uh, right here is going to start to go dormant uh, in the next uh, month and a half or so. And so I'm just in the, um, I'm not going to do anything to it uh, the rest of the way. Uh, again, September is going to be dry. And so there's some possibility though that I'll have to water it. This is newly planted sod about a month ago and I am continuing to monitor the water on it. And so I wouldn't want it to get stressed and dry and then get its first frost in the fall. So I am continuing to monitoring to monitor the water on it. So I'm going to switch over and start talking about the vegetable garden. And uh, let's start out with our summer uh, vegetables. Uh, you know, we're, we're at the toward the end of the season here. I still have tomatoes that are looking uh, pretty good. Still have some peppers producing. Uh, still have uh, some okra producing uh, in my vegetable garden from the summer. Some other things I've uh, already taken out. My cucumbers uh, had some diseased foliage on them. Be careful as you're tearing plants out that have disease problems, insect problems. Again, just like I said on pruning your perennials earlier, don't put that stuff in the uh, compost bin. Uh, dispose of it uh, some other way so that that stuff doesn't just get, keep getting recycled back into your into your garden. Um, you know, go ahead and journal your successes, and this is going to be the case throughout your entire uh, landscape, you know, with annuals that you had this year and perennials that you had, and then your vegetable garden, same thing. Uh, you know, just try to write down some things. Maybe there's some varieties that you don't want to grow again next year. Maybe there's some things that a neighbor gave you that you do want to try, and, uh, you know, go ahead and order those. Uh, um, you can think about ordering those seeds now. I have actually already ordered my spring vegetable seeds. I think there may be some issue with that um, you know, availability uh, going into uh, next spring. So I've already acquired mine. So be thinking about that now. You can also be thinking about saving seed from the things you still have uh, in your vegetable garden right now if you want to uh, try to collect it uh, yourself. Uh, a lot of time, you know, the days are getting shorter and a lot of the fruit that's on your vegetable plants from the summer may not have time to mature. Uh, at this point. So if you've got some really small tomatoes that don't seem to be doing anything, you can take those off and then the plant could put its remaining energy into finishing the ones that are a little closer to being finished. That would be true with uh, things like uh, any kind of melons that you have left or pumpkins. You can strip the, uh, the old foliage off. You can strip off the, old, the smaller ones that are obviously not going to finish and allow that plant to uh, uh, really put its energy uh, into uh, finishing. If you've got pumpkins, you can elevate them off the ground uh, right now to prevent them from rotting if the soil was to become extremely wet. I just talked about uh, saving seeds on some of your uh, vegetables in the garden. You could also do the same thing with any herbs uh, that you have. You can also, as we get near the end of the season here, it might be time just to harvest your herbs completely and then dry them and uh, preserve them uh, for, for, the, for the winter and definitely want to continue to harvest uh, any of your vegetables out of the garden. If you do, we do get an abnormally warm or hot 
uh, September in your area, uh, you know, it's possible that you will have, continue to have production. So again, the more you pick, you know, the more the plants, uh, the more the plants will produce. And backing up to when I was talking about perennials and annuals and shrubs and those kinds of things, if you have any flowers on any of those things, those things can be dried uh, at this time of year as well. So as those warm season uh, vegetables or summer vegetables start to come out, it's time to uh, put in our fall vegetables and typically I'll add uh, some compost uh, back into that space to just kind of rejuvenate the soil uh, from what the uh, summer crops uh, took out of it. Uh, it's time that you can direct seed any of your leafy greens like lettuce and spinach and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't direct seed most things in my garden. I have um, some squirrels and things that want to mess with them and so I typically will start my seed in, in the house. I have already started uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli and kohlrabi and beets and, uh, and some of those have already been planted into some space that cleared up from zucchini and squash and some cucumbers that I've already taken out. Uh, you have to watch the uh, cabbage moths. I've got, um, you probably see this little white butterfly flying behind me uh, back here. This is a cabbage moth. Um, they uh, lay their eggs on all of those uh, uh, broccoli and kale and, and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, all those brassicas uh, in the fall, and they will do some significant damage to them. I've actually netted uh, over the top of mine to prevent him from, prevent that little uh, cabbage moth from doing that uh, to mine. You do need to keep an eye on that. They can do significant damage uh, to your fall crops. It's a little beautiful, little, little white moth that flies or flutters about um, and lays eggs on those things. Uh, I've already st I've started some peas. And so any of those fall vegetables, it's time to be thinking about uh, putting them in. You can succession plant them. And so I've already put in uh, one row here of, uh, like I say, broccoli and beets and uh, Brussels sprouts. And as I clear that space out, I'll just continue to plant. And that way I'm not harvesting it all at the exact same time. Uh, lettuce can also be done in bowls. You know, if you have rabbits or you live in an apartment, you have a sunny space, uh, lettuce is super easy just to seed directly into a bowl. The reason I use a low bowl, you can use any kind of pot you want. But uh, again, in the fall, uh, containers tend to stay on the wetter side. And so uh, you don't need to water them as much. They're not aggressive. Uh, they're not aggressive taking up water. And so you can save a lot of money by just growing things in little shallow bowls, uh, including pansies and getting back on those flowering things as well. But lettuce is super, super easy. A small amount of fertilizer, some lettuce seed, a low bowl and a bag of potting soil, and you can be eating fresh uh, lettuce this fall for sure. The last thing I'll talk about in the uh, vegetable garden is uh, you can extend, if you still have, you know, like me, I've got really good looking tomatoes over here. I've got some uh, peppers still going over here. Uh, you may be able to extend the amount of time that you can continue to harvest by putting some sort of uh, some sort of greenhouse over the top of them or cold frame, uh, some sort of plastic structure over them, and to continue to build up some heat during the day. The days will be shorter, so they have a harder time, you know, building up heat. Uh, that would definitely help with that. Also, being prepared for the potential for an early frost or a hard freeze on these fall vegetables like the lettuce and and the other things that I've talked about here, the kale and broccoli and all those things, uh, being able to put some sort of hoop over the top of them. I've got uh, videos on my channel for bending uh, the top rail from a uh, fence post and creating little hoops that then you can put plastic over the top of and it will, I think you'll be able to extend your season quite a bit. The way it works for me in my area, we typically get a frost right around, sometime around October 15th to 20th, and then we don't get another one for two weeks. So if I can just protect things for that one or two frost there in the middle of October, I can carry well into November uh, uh, continuing to harvest uh, those leafy greens. September is uh, definitely the month that we want to be thinking all, of all the things that we're going to want to try to overwinter that aren't hardy outside. Obviously that includes your house plants. If you've had house, house plants outside on your porches uh, or in containers outside, it's time to, uh, you know, you can, you can repot those. You can do a little pruning on them. You need to check them for insects, obviously, before you bring them inside, make sure they're clean and uh, ready to uh, come in. And like I said, if they need, they need to be repotted. This is a perfect opportunity to do that outside. Uh, you might find that if you pull one out of a container, you may find some other hidden uh, insects in the, uh, in the soil media at the same exact time. Uh, tropicals, things like mandevillas and diplodenias and things like that that you purchased, maybe flowering hibis tropical hibiscus, those kinds of things. It is possible um, if you have a bright uh, interior space to overwinter those things. Uh, I've got a, a diplodenia over here in a container. I'll probably try to uh, 
pr probably try to keep it. Those things are sensitive to even minor frost and freezes. So those decisions need to be made sooner than later. A lot of the other things that happen in the yard, minor frost won't cause a big problem. Definitely will on your mandevilla and uh, your diplodenias and things like that. Uh, if you have a greenhouse space, um, th this is the time to uh, kind of get it ready. I've got a greenhouse over here. All I've done so far is put a shade cloth on it because I'm doing some winter propagation or doing some propagation uh, with that space. I'm eventually going to put plastic around it. I have electricity out there. I'll have the ability to add some heat to it if I want to. So I have that as an option for some of the uh, overwintering as well. That may be a uh, possibility you can think through between now and the time uh, that you get a frost. A few other things that might go on that overwintering list that I can think of are geraniums, maybe some of your herbs if you have a bright window. Uh, inside that's uh, south facing. A lot of times they can end up with some problems as the winter goes on and the days become really, really short if you're not giving them additional light. Sometimes there's just not enough, but you may be able to get a few weeks, a few more weeks out of them. Regardless, one other thing I'm doing is I've got some annuals in the yard, including some African basil, some hibiscus that I'm actually doing cuttings on. So I'm taking cuttings on my annuals and I'm going to overwinter them as rooted cuttings and then I'll be able to plant them back out in the spring. That should save me some money from having to repurchase them or redo them from seed uh, next year. So of course a lot of the projects that we may have been putting off because it's been uh, you know in the 90s uh, outside it might be time to start thinking uh, about those and doing your planning. I'm always talking about planning uh, in these videos. Certainly planning for planting and those kinds of things but I'm replacing a fence back here when it gets cooler and uh, you know I'm planning for that. I'm installing a compost bin uh, over here. It's going to be actually part of the fence uh, installation. I'd like to have it in place in time to when I'm gathering up all this material and leaves and things that are going to be coming down uh, during the fall that I'll have a place to uh, start composting uh, that material. I touched on earlier about writing things down and, I've, and I've I think I've talked about that in most of these videos uh, during the year. Uh, I do think it's a good idea to go um, around your yard and, and write down the successes and failures. I'm actually going to have a video series uh, in the next week or two here on things that um, went well in this first year in this house and things that I didn't think uh, went as well. I'll cover the annuals, the perennials, the shrubs uh, separately uh, in videos and just kind of talk through those uh, things with you guys. And I suggest, you know, you go through and write those things uh, down at the same time. Also another video I have coming, I have a video coming on um, um, uh, adding nutrients and uh, minerals and folks recommending things uh, that you do in your yard on YouTube videos and on blogs and things like that. Uh, and they don't talk about doing a soil test. You know, anything that you're adding to your soil outside of compost and basic uh, organic fertilizers, you really do need soil. Uh, consider doing a soil test. You can get mail order or a mail away soil test from Amazon uh, and, 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 and you can take them to your state. Uh, lab as well. Um, I'm lucky that my state lab is right up here on, down the road for me in Raleigh, but uh, this will be a good time of year to do some soil testing. But don't take the recommendation of just random things you see on the internet of things to be adding to your soil. Uh, we add things to the soil based on uh, results from a soil test. So I think I'll wrap up the September gardening to do video right here. I've actually got lots of things that I'm doing uh, in this yard during the month of September. I'm lucky to live, I feel like I'm super lucky to live in the southeast. Fall is uh, the best time of year, sometimes in the spring. We had a long spring this year, but typically our springs here in the southeast, um, it's cold one morning and then it's 90 uh, and it happens super, super fast. But our falls are long and um, they offer the uh, a lot of time to be able to work in the yard. Uh, they offer a lot of dry days, like I said earlier in the video. Uh, which uh, you know allow you to uh, get, to get a lot accomplished in the yard. So I'm going to get started on it now. I'll see you with another one of these uh, monthly gardening to do videos in October. Thanks for watching.